Dark Quest 2. I believe we're dealing with a turn-based strategy RPG. But we're going in blind as usual. Poop. <laughs> Can you tell it's a bit of a uh, temporary name? We'll stick with normal for now. I have a letter for you, friend. On the night of celebration, hosted by the king himself, there was a deep and sinister evil lurking beneath the castle. The sorcerer, with his orcs and goblins, dug tunnels and attacked us from below. Monsters from another dimension were summoned, and within a few hours, every man, woman, and child were butchered in the night of blood and drunken frenzy. Alright. The only people who survived that night were here in the village, a village haunted by the screams of our fallen brethren. You must now enter the castle to face madness, horror, and death on your ultimate quest to defeat the evil sorcerer and his minions. Good luck. Nah. <laughs> Just turn around and walk away. That sounds dangerous. <laughs> sounds really dangerous though. Oh hey, cutscene. We must warn Master. Master, they are coming. I see them. What would you have me do, Master? Open the gates. Let them in. Yes, Master. <laughs> On one hand, that's pretty good art. On the other hand, it's like motion tweening or whatever it's called, where it's like moving on hinges like Duralius and Associates. And there's like a weird, there was like a weird like interlacing problem with the render or something. But the art's nice. Moving, left click on the empty floor to see the path your hero will take to get there. Left click again and they'll move there. You can play another hero during your turn by simply clicking on him. Okay, well I have this dude, he's my one dude. I can go anywhere on the screen. Let's go to the arrows that must take me to the next map. Left click the skeleton to search for treasure. This will test your perception. If you succeed, you will discover some treasure. Right click on a character to see their statistics. All right. Half sanity, high courage, low perception, physical based guy. Barbarian, a powerful character who can bring terror and death to all the enemies with the skill of his sword. Click. 40% chance to find treasure, so perception's a one-to-one, -one, it seems. At least at this difficulty range. Sweet, I suck. Good job, me. Can I try again? I cannot. Alright. Good to know we're dealing with a very stupid person. Your attack and accuracy control how much damage you will do after each strike. An attack of one and accuracy of 60% means that there's a 60% chance to score a hit. This repeats for every attack point. The enemy will use his defense to try and block those hits. Get him. So I... He has a 20% chance to block, and I, I deal up to one damage, but I only have a 60% chance of hitting. So that's like a 40% chance of success, right? A uh, little weird frame skip there. Alright. Get him. Oh. I can do two damage? Alright. <laughs> it's just a corpse! Look at the little goblin corpse. That's incredible. <laughs> Turn back now whilst you still can. He seems nice. I've got potions of life. Heals your character upon consuming this potion. Uh, one of the following will happen. 20% low quality, one po point of health. 70% two points of health. 10% exceptional quality, restores 3 points, so it's an RNG on the heal. Throwing axe. Ooh. Um. This is slightly confusing. 1 deals 1 to 2 damage, 2 deals 2 to 3 damage, 3, 2 axes. Ability 1 out of 3. Axes 1? Okay. Huh. End your turn. I guess that's just when you want to stand still. I don't have any other characters to control, so it's just this dude for now. Magic pot can be used to learn new abilities and skills. Okay, let's do that. You find these magic pots throughout the dungeon and use them in, in the village to upgrade your ability points. The last surviving monster also drops a magic pot, so I can't do that until I'm done. That's my inventory. 
Oh, there's a map. This is probably a dead end then, judging by the map, unless it scrolls. Chest? Not a mimic, right? 100 gold is mine. The Skull of Fate. Upon activating the skull, one of the following will happen. A random enemy will die. A random enemy will suffer one to two points of damage. You will be healed for one to two points. You will get some gold. Nothing will happen. Wow, those are all good things or neutral things. I thought that half of them would be bad or something. Let's do it. Oh, he took a damage. Owie. The movement interests me. It seems like you might have infinite movement speed. Like you just go everywhere on the screen in one go. It seems like you wouldn't really be limited. Abilities. You can use abilities such as the Barbarian's Throwing Axe to win a battle. There are unique powers and can only be used once in each quest, so use them with care. So I can only use that once. Interesting. What if I get that guy? Re Click. How do I tell if I'm selecting it right now or not? There we go. Haha! -ha. Now you don't have a spellcaster. Take that. Oh, it doesn't even use up my move. Gotcha. And I got your gold. Uh, let's do a heal. Ta-da! So now I'm fully capped out again. Get the gold? Oh, I couldn't click on the gold past my character. That's the mistake I was making. I need to find a way to open the gate. I hate barrels, also. I just can't seem to find anything. Oh, I found a thing. How do you fail at searching a barrel? It's a barrel. At some point, you don't have 40% perception, you're just an idiot. <laughs> it's, an, it's a container. They contain things. That's, that's all they do. Magic attacks. Some characters like the wizard or goblin warlock have a magical attack. To block magic damage from either an attack or an ability, you must have a spell shield. Note, there is also chaos damage, which cannot be blocked by any means. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go deck this guy in the face because he seems like he's dangerous. Got him. Ow, rude. Stop doing that. I said cut it out. Oh, look at you blocking. Ow. The path to the exit is now clear. Also, oh, there's a sick rat over there. Did I poke around the remaining map a bit? Probably. That seems like the thing to do. That's the exit. But I missed a door back there. Shall we? The corpses are really funny. Just the weird little skeletons that are just sitting there. Ah, uh, yeah, that was worth the backtrack, and I did. Nailed it. All right, well, nobody saw that. You didn't, especially you. You didn't see that at all. Don't look at me. Ah, uh, oh. I guess I'm dying now. Ah ha ha. Or he's leaving. Your magic will soon come to an end, sorcerer. <laughs> I just like to walk up to dudes and laugh at them, then leave lead them to my evil lair. Victory. Congratulations, you have successfully completed your quest and are now closer to finding the lair of the evil sorcerer. You must return to the village and rest for your next mission. That did not seem like it went... Ah, it, wait. Over there on the left, I can still see the start menu. That was really weird. Uh, that was really weird. Also, that did not look like it was going to take me to the village, honestly. It looked like I was going to go way deeper. Some important things you can do in this village. Rest at the tavern to restore missing health points. Learn new spells. Buy potions. Resurrect dead heroes. Start a new quest. There's a lot going on here. Can I drag? Can I drag all the way back to the start screen I saw back there? Hello? Oh, the brothel's locked. 
You, you can't come to the brothel. We only accept your money if you uh, do quests or something. You can't do the merchant either. You can't do the grave digger. Tavern. Recruit new heroes and rest your party. That's that's those that's just, those are sounds. Hello there, stranger. Welcome. Let's get more dudes. I want more dudes. Here you will find new heroes that can join your party for a fee. To recruit a hero, drag them into your party. If you have enough gold, the hero will join you. I want new characters of different classes. There's a wizard, a knight, a dark monk, and an archer. I mean, a wizard's probably fun. He's very weak to close combat, but has highly potent sp skills. Spells are capable of altering the outcome of any battle to your favor. Use his powers wisely, and you may stand a chance. Or the archer. A highly elusive character that can set up traps and shoot with deadly arrows. Her agility allows her to evade melee attacks and sometimes hide away from prying eyes. I kind of want to have a archer. I am ready for battle. You have recruited one out of four heroes. The next hero will join you your party after you completed four more quests. Wow, okay. Say goodbye to new characters for a bit. Let's rest. When you return to the village from a quest, your heroes will have low health. To restore full health, it is necessary to rest them, otherwise you will start the next quest with the same health. Drag them into the slots. 50 GP per head. I have the following beds available for tonight. A good night's rest will get you back to full strength. Kind of remind- this- this town actually reminds me a lot of Darkest Dungeon. They're down to the, like, there's a sidebar of characters on the right side of the screen that have little quotes when you put- make them do things, and there's- you drag them manually and specifically into these slots, and there's a limited number of slots, it looks like, and you recruit the- and you recruit the people back in town, but they seem to be disposable, because it seems like none of them are named or important, necessarily. All while dealing with some sort of great calamity. Very much reminds me of, uh, Darkest Dungeon at the moment. Alchemist sells potions. Hello there, stranger. Welcome. Each hero may carry one to three potions. Drinking a potion will consume it. You may only use one potion per turn. Drag and drop a potion to the bag slot to purchase it. That's a lot of potions. Potion of life. Gives you two magic shields. One additional action per turn. Damn. Refresh. You can recast your spell. But not with things that cast ammo. Plus two magic shield and it completely heals you. That's why it's super expensive, apparently. Reduces all incoming damage to a maximum of one. Neat. Huh. Well, you don't have a potion at all, but you're not necessarily going to be in melee range. I'll grab one. I won't be able to buy a character for a while, anyway. Magician. To learn an upgrade and an ability or a skill, you need to spend one magic pot. An ability may only be used once in a quest, whereas a skill can be used at multiple times. Drag and drop, drag in drop the magic pot at the bottom of the slot. Oh, we have shared magic pottage between the party, apparently. So here's my throwing axe. So now that makes a little more sense. If I get to rank three, I'll throw two axes. That'd probably do two to, two to three damage each. Counterattack. Every time you get attacked, you have a chance to counterattack. 10% chance to trigger, plus one damage, plus two damage. That sounds like it's not once per skill. It sounds like it's uh, once per mission. It sounds like it'll just keep looping. Double attack. As you study your opponent, you're uh, able to launch into additional strikes every... An additional strike every five, three, or four... Or five, four, three attacks. So you learn it, and every fifth attack gives you a double attack. Or, and then you can upgrade it to become every fourth or third attack. That's a lot of double attacks. Spear of Steel, increased offensive powers. One attack, two attack, 10% accuracy. Only lasts until I leave the room, so I must have to trigger it? Do I also have to trigger these skills even though they only have a chance of triggering? Because these two sound like passives, but so did that one that says effects last until you leave the room. But it says every time you get attacked. But if it was a, if you triggered it once per room, a ten percent would not be a good not be good of effect for a one one time use. Tactics improves the overall effectiveness of the barbarian in the battlefield. One damage to throwing X. Okay, yeah, that sounds passive as hell. One damage to your throwing X. Surviving enemies struck by fear of steel test their courage. 
50% to do a triple strike when double strike triggers. So half the time when this triggers, it'll also it'll turn into a triple strike. Rage, if your health drops below these numbers, you gain two attack. Or as long as your health is low. Man-to-man -man enters into man-to-man uh, -man combat every time you initiate an attack. Every Each character attacks in sequence. Uh, bonus attack lasts until you exit the room. Huh. So the two of them will just keep hitting each other, basically. At first it only lasts two rounds, then it keeps lasting until their death, and then eventually your reward for victory will be that you actually gain an attack point. There's potential for some interesting mechanics here with these characters. Archer can detect traps. Two squares, or... As you move around... Skill... Ability... So we know that's an ability. So that's the because that that clears that's now I'm, I'm seeing it now. So that's the thing you can do one per once per mission, whereas these are always around. So these three, yeah, only the things on the left are abilities for this character. Okay, so here's a temporary uh, stat buff. Here's man to man, and here's throwing axe. Everything else is passive. Good to know. Is the same thing for you? Nope, they're scattered everywhere. For you, these, uh, the top three are skills, everything down here is an ability. So detect traps, you can see them with it in two squares, check for traps around you as you enter the room, party tests perception to dodge a trap when they accidentally stop, uh, step into it. Survival instincts. He evades melee attacks and hides away, 20% chance to evade, 50%, or becomes invisible, or breaks if you move to perform an action. Surprise attack. Upon entering a room, you have a 20, 40, 60% chance to launch a surprise attack at the enemy. Well, that's a fun idea. Magic arrow. You get one, two, three arrows that deal two uh, magic damage to a target enemy. Applies bandages to a friendly character, increasing by three, four, five points. Explosive. Gives you one, two, three arrows that explode upon impact, dealing one magic damage to all enemies in a all units in a three by three area. Trap. Set up a spear trap in the target location that deals one damage to the first enemy that walks into it. Let's uh, scatter a few about, why don't we? Oh, that, that dragged this one? I want to have a surprise attack, I think. That sounds like fun. Even if it doesn't always trigger. And for you, let's give you the double attack and counter attack. This will prove useful. There we go. Hello there, stranger. Welcome. Advice. Custom maps. That must be online Steam Workshop stuff. I could give you some advice, but you wouldn't know what to do with it. Thanks, dick. Whoa, look at that campaign. Hello. We did that one before, but not this one. The Passage. You continue your exploration inside the mountain caves. These caves seem to be hiding some sort of secret tunnel that may lead you into the main castle. Elder. Maximum of two characters allowed. You must now assemble your party and travel to the castle to complete your mission, but beware, the evil sorcerer is always watching. I like the art. And I was a little worried about the combat because I was just clicking on dudes and it seemed kind of boring. But now I've got a second character, there's a bunch of upgrades in the town. Might be a bit more going on now. Do we auto-transition together? We do not. That might get a little tedious. Ooh, first, that's some good luck. The first thing that happened was it triggered the surprise attack in the first room I walked into. What if I go in two different directions? What happens? I should not venture alone. Oh, you can't even split up. I don't know why you would, really, but I was just curious. No, 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 I didn't mean to do that. Oh, oh, cool, I got it. I was like, I'm pretty sure they have way better perception, right? Perception 40%. Perception 50%. That's what I kind of figured. 
They have identical sanity. The sanity meter also makes me think of Darkest Dungeon again. So, Barbarian's all courage, but the, uh, rogue has a bit more perception. But a lot less courage. Ow. The castle and its dungeons hold many traps. Most of them will trigger only once and then become harmless. Traps can only be detected through a skill or by carrying a torch. Yeah, I did not buy that skill. So I will reap the consequences, I suppose. Hooray! This place goes on for a while, doesn't it? Oh look, there are baddies. I was kind of getting curious. Yeah, these are passive, as I thought. I was a little worried. So they have the spear trap that they that she puts down is basically like the one we saw before. So I currently have two charges of that. Other than that, I can just attack. Patoing. Now, I'll show you. How do you feel about that? I mean, always use these, right? They're just exciting. Money! Die. You can shoot past the skull, but the skull is mighty. The alchemist sold me a low-quality potion. Great. It's okay, I don't need those to survive or anything. Get that pot. So I'm capped out at carrying three, so I, I guess I have to spend them when I have them, or we'll quickly run out. I mean, uh, or I'll just miss my... I'll run out of slots for it, and I'll have to worry about not being able to get more when I want them. Oh, that's a block. But they didn't come after me. Ooh, counterattack. We're triggering the effects that I purchased. Good to know. Can I zoom out? The mouse wheel does not zoom out, which is unfortunate because this thing is actually... There's a lot of map now. Let's go this way. I guess you should be searching things, really. You shot the barrel with your bow, huh? Is that your go-to strategy for... for barrel opening? Impressive, I suppose? The, the herbs in this potion make me feel better. Now die. Oh, she can temporarily enter the square of my of her ally. Good to know. Got him. We can't go over there though, can we? The path is blocked. By what sorcery could this occur? Hi. You go, because you have the ability to search things with it. Ow, I kind of right when I said that, I kind of had the thought there might be a trap in the room. But look at all my money! Oh. That's fine, I don't need to succeed at things anyway. Was it the only trap in the room? Because I wasn't really that curious. I wasn't really careful about retracing my own steps. I kind of just walked across the same er uh, different areas and was like, Yeah, what could go wrong? I'm just ch stepping on new squares in a place that I've established as traps. And then my sarcasm was rewarded with, with, with results, evidently. Oh, you can zoom. I guess it gives you a chance to look at some of the art. Other- because you don't really need to see... There's not much detail to pick out from zooming in as far as, like, navigating the level goes. Am I back to where I was before? I am. Is there a way to select both characters at once? Just because it seems like an unnecessarily slow way to leave rooms when you're not in combat. Hi.
die. Thank you. Onward, barbarian slave. Come with me onto victory. At this point, I'm just poking around for any of the rooms I haven't seen yet. So we did a whole lap, but didn't actually do a whole lot while we we're there. Definitely need to open the map periodically just to see where we're going. I guess we'll just keep going to the end of the hallway. There's got to be a better way. Just cause this, the walking across the room with both guys just takes twice as long as it should really. I wonder if I'm missing something. Now it says three out of four instead of three out of three. Is that, oh, is that just a measurement of how many are in the dungeon? Could be. Makes this a pretty short run, doesn't it? So we haven't been here yet. Might be the last room, judging by the potion collection. That stone on the floor looks peculiar. Well, I'll use the inspection person to check it out. A secret passage. And she just blinks out of existence. Goodbye. Oh yeah, dungeon exit. Got it. Congratulations, you've done the thing. That's really weird. That's really weird how you can see the start screen every time it does that. It's just a strange choice, aesthetically. What would I theor theoretically want to upgrade next? Just giving him a higher chance of doing multi-attacks seems neat, although being so proc-based is a little disappointing, perhaps. I didn't use my abilities that time, did I? We should definitely learn to detect traps. Maybe even the, as soon as you enter a room one, not sure. Having a healing ability is pretty good. And a 40% chance of attacking as you enter the room, perhaps. 10% is kind of low. So let's go for double attack. Perhaps. Yeah, that's fine. I think I'm actually going to cut it here, guys. Thanks for watching, like always. This has been Dark Quest 2. I guess there must have been a Dark Quest 1. This is shockingly the first time that occurs to me. It occurred to me. I was I guess I wasn't thinking as actively about the actual title of the video. I'm curious about up here. Oh, you can. You can invite other players. It's a multiplayer game. That's kind of neat. So you can play four player and maybe each of you plays as one of the characters or something when you're running around with your squad. I kind of like that idea. So thanks for watching like always. If you want to check out the game, you can uh, find the uh, link to the Steam page in the description. And I will see you guys next time.